How you doing guys? This is the Lord Among Us from RuleTheWasteland.com. And one of the things that I cover in a lot of these videos is uh, gold and silver and some gun related stuff. So it goes without saying that if you have a lot of this stuff in your house, or not even a lot, but just a decent amount of it, like even a couple guns, a little bit of gold and silver, you're going to want a safe place to put it. And if you decide not to hide it somewhere really creative, you might want to look into getting a safe. Now the issue with the safe is that people can usually find it and uh, they will try to break into it, or in a lot of cases, carry it away. Something that a lot of people don't even think about is that uh, even a large safe is uh, you know, gonna be a couple hundred pounds, but that's not that much if you think that there's three or four guys, you know, each only have to lift 100, 150 pounds and then carry away a pretty damn heavy safe. And uh, w once it's on its back or carried out somewhere, they can spend a lot more time breaking into it. Or even if they don't actually leave it, if you just push it over and you can use a couple pry bars and, um, you know, big breaker bars and hammers and stuff like that. And you can get into a lot of safes a lot more quickly than you would think. Watch some videos online for things like Liberty Safe and how they show how tough theirs are to get into. And it's actually, um, even theirs are quicker than you would expect with those methods, usually if the safe is lying on its back. And some of the cheaper safes, the guys are busting into them in five minutes or something like that. So really, really not as much work as you would think to crack open a safe just in simple leverage. But it's almost always done with the safe laying flat on the ground because it's really hard to get leverage if it's uh, you know tucked away somewhere or standing up. You just can't get that kind of weight behind it, multiple people in there and whatnot. So for all these reasons, <clears throat> not being able to break into it as easily, certainly not being able to carry it away. It's a very good idea to anchor your safe into the ground because you'd feel like a complete idiot if you came back and the entire safe was just gone. So there's no point in having a safe if the thing can just be carried out. So you really want to anchor it if at all possible. And there's uh, fairly simple ways to do that. Most safes have areas in the bottom that you, you know, holes that you can uh, drill through, mounting screws. If it's wood, if you have a wooden floor, it's fairly simple. You just make sure you have the right size screw, you drill a pilot hole and sink in a uh, anchor screw or a lag bolt into the wood, depending on what kind of floor you have, if it's raised or whatnot, what kind of subfloor you got going on there. So wood is pretty simple, obviously not quite as strong, but it's still gonna make it damn near impossible to tip the safe over. If you have a concrete floor like I do, it becomes a little more tricky, but also becomes pretty damn solid once you anchor it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and anchor my safe in and I show you the process, how it's done using um, wedge anchors, which is a certain type of concrete anchor that are driven into the pilot hole. You hammer it in and the, uh, that causes an expansion when you screw down the nut that actually causes it to, to grow into the hole and wedge in there, hence the name wedge anchor, and prevent it from being pulled out. So it's a pretty solid anchor for concrete purposes. So I'm gonna show you the process of doing that for a safe so you guys can do that on yours if you need to. So once you've gone into your secret bunker, moved aside the uh, secret doorway to get into your secret passageway to your secondary secret bunker, and then gone into the, uh, the false floor beneath that and uh, gotten to where your actual safe is, then you're gonna need to take out all your guns, which um, if you have the correct amount of guns should take you between 45 minutes to an hour and a half just to move all your guns out of your safe. And then what you're gonna wanna look for is in the, like the corner, this had some plastic caps over these little holes here and then you could just see the sheet metal and then the concrete beneath that in the middle. Now I've already marked the circles for where I'm gonna drill. Ideally, your safe would be such that you don't have to move it, but the way I was uh, testing, when I was testing it out here, it doesn't look like the drill will be able to be 100% upright inside the safe because it's, these holes are too close to the wall in, on some of them. And I really, really don't want to have these be crooked with these concrete anchors. I think that could cause a lot of problems, just not have them work out well at all. So what I'm gonna do is I just marked on the concrete with a marker where these holes need to be, and then I'm gonna have to scoot the safe out of the way, drill the holes, put it back in place, and then put the anchors in. And, you know, that's a little extra work, but something that shouldn't take more than an extra half an hour to scoot this thing out of the way and it could save me a lot of heartache or it could even make the difference between it working or not working at all and just wasting a lot of time and money and still not having the thing anchored. So we're, we've marked that, now we'll scoot this out of the way and then we'll uh, go ahead and drill the holes and put the safe back in place. All right, so the only good thing that these god-awful terrazzo floors have ever done for me is they do make it easy to move heavy things without having to worry about damaging the floor. But the ease with which I slided this thing out of here just proves that it really needs to be anchored because it would not be that difficult or take that long for even one person 
to just scoot this thing out and maybe throw it on a hand car. And certainly two people could just slide it out part way through the house and then carry it out and throw it in the back of a truck or something. So anchoring it is super important. And you can see here and here where I have the holes, or not the holes rather, but the holes marked with marker. So I can drill them without having to be limited by the confines of the safe. And then I can put the safe back over it before putting in the anchors, obviously. So we're gonna go ahead and do the drilling now. And then I will uh, show you guys the results. So you're obviously gonna choose your wedge anchors based on the size of the hole in the bottom of your safe. You want one that will easily fit through there. And then you'll have a washer. These came with some, and I also have some much larger washers here that I'm gonna put behind those just to create even more uh, barrier between the bolts, being, the bolts being pulled out. It would still take a tremendous amount of force, but the bigger the washer there, the, uh, the more force it would take even still. And these will tell you the minimum length that they need to be anchored in the ground. And uh, where is it right here? And the drill bit size it is needed for the hole. So it'll tell you right on the back. So you, in a slab like this, obviously you have a little bit of the depth to work with if you're anchoring into a wall or something else like that, then uh, you have to know how much, how deep it is. You don't want to get a super long wedge anchor that you need to um, drill in really deep. And it also tells you how deep to drill the hole because you need a little bit of distance at the bottom. So based on that, you can decide what drill bit to use and make sure you get a masonry drill bit. And with that being said, you can do this with a normal, you can drill uh, concrete with a normal drill, but I don't recommend it because it will take forever and it might burn your bit a little bit out quicker than it would otherwise. So if you get your hands on a hammer drill like this, it will make the job so much easier. You want to make sure you vacuum out this debris or debris too so it doesn't block up your hole and you can see what you're doing. <laughs> Then I actually mark on my drill bit, I don't know if you can see, with a, a black line with a permanent marker so you can tell if you're at the right depth. It looks like I'm pretty damn close. Good enough. Let's get the rest of the debris. And then just repeat that for the next three holes. All right, as you can see, the holes here have been drilled. So now we get to do our little rain dance prayer to see that these line up with the holes in the safe. All right, so for the most part, these line up pretty good. They're a little bit tighter on the, the sheet metal down there than I would like on a couple of them. But I think that uh, we'll still be able to get it to work pretty good. And now I'm gonna, I brought this mini sledge to hammer it in. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna hammer in this, this like a flat end goes down into the hole so that when you screw the nut onto it, it pulls that wedge up onto this and stretches it down onto this uh, beveled area and expands into the hole. Now what you wanna do is, I'm holding the camera with one hand so I can't show you, but you just wanna go ahead and thread the nut on ahead of time because once you start hammering it in, if you deform the top threads at all, it's gonna be a bitch and a half to thread this stuff on after that. So you wanna make sure you do that first. 
And there you have it guys, that's what the finished product will look like. Sorry I couldn't show you a little more of the process. It was very tight and very dark and hard to work around in here with the tools in my hands, let alone trying to hold the camera at the same time. But you just uh, put the washers and nuts on first, like I was saying, and then hammer it in to where you've marked it on the bolt for the required depth, and then you need to tighten it down. Now, ideally you would have like a deep well socket but I had didn't have any of those lying around, so I needed to use some like pliers and vice grips, and that was kind of a pain in the ass too to try to turn these like a quarter of a turn at a time, but it is doable that way. So yeah, that's it. Now this thing is not going anywhere, that's for sure. So that's how you keep someone from walking off with your safe.